let's talk about the earth and the universe our solar system consists of sun and eight planets and they were formed by the condensation of gases and other smaller bodies all planets revolve around the sun in elliptical orbits and like earth they also shine through reflected light the surface temperature of sun is around 6000 degrees celsius and reaching around 20 million degrees celsius as we move towards the interior sun is around 300000 times bigger than the earth we will not talk about planets mercury is the smallest and also closest to sun it is 57 million kilometers away from sun and here one year is 88 days long second planet after mercury is venus and it is twice the distance from sun third planet is earth earth has a natural satellite called moon it revolves in eastward direction around earth and completes a revolution in 27 days fourth planet is mars it has dark patches on its surface and it is very promising for life after earth next comes the jupiter which is the largest planet of our solar system his surface is formed from many gases like hydrogen helium methane etc it is distinguishable because of its light and dark bands and it also has many satellites next comes saturn it is second largest planet after jupiter it is so far from sun that it takes 29.5 years to complete its revolution next is uranus it is 50 times larger than earth and is 15 times heavier it revolves in clockwise direction around the sun now comes neptune it has 13 satellites and is a very cold planet let's talk about the shape of earth now we do know that it is spherical but it took us a lot of time to realize this now we have aerial photographs taken from rockets and satellites which show that earth is spherical but we were able to establish this through other methods also one is the circumnavigation of earth if we start from one point and keep sailing then we reach the same point so this proved that earth is spherical secondly if we look at horizon from some height then it looks circular this shows that earth must be spherical third proof we get from visibility of ships if a ship moves away towards horizon then the last portion of ship which remains visible is the top of the ship this shows that earth must be spherical next proof is that the sunrise and sunset takes place at different times at different locations this would not have been possible if earth was flat next proof is the lunar eclipse during lunar eclipse the shadow of earth on moon is spherical proving that earth is spherical next is the observation that since other planetary bodies like sun moon and stars are also spherical so earth must be spherical too next proof is that if we dig three poles at equal distances then top of the middle pole looks to be higher than the other two proving that the earth is spherical the earth rotates on its axis from west to east direction and completes this in 24 hours and this rotation causes day and night earth revolves around the sun in 365 and 1 by 4th of a day and this causes seasons and years since we cannot add 1 by 4th of a day to a single year so we add an extra day every 4 years making it a leap year axis of earth is inclined at an angle of 66 and a half degree and because of this tilt the duration of day and night is not same everywhere in northern hemisphere 
duration of darkness keeps on increasing as winters approach. In Arctic Circle, the sun does not even rise on 22nd December. And if you move further away from Arctic Circle towards North Pole, the duration of darkness increases even more. In summers, the situation is reversed. In Arctic Circle, the sun does not set on 21st June and duration of brightness keeps on increasing as you move towards the North Pole. In Southern Hemisphere, entirely reverse conditions develop as compared to Northern Hemisphere. The sun is vertically overhead at equator twice an year, around 21st March and around 21st September, and these are called equinoxes. After March, the sun is overhead in Tropic of Cancer on 21st June and it is known as June or Summer Solstice. Similarly, sun is overhead at Tropic of Capricorn on 22nd December and this is called Winter Solstice. During a solstice, the duration of a day is maximum. These dates can also vary by a day or two. Now let's talk about seasons. In summers, temperature is high which is due to the sun being overhead. If sun is overhead, the rays fall vertically on earth and time for them to get absorbed in atmosphere before reaching land is also low and sunlight per unit area is high and because of this temperature soars. In winters, the sun rays are oblique and atmosphere is able to absorb them before reaching land and sunlight per unit area is low and this leads to fall in temperature. One more reason is that in summer, duration of day is more and in winters, duration of days is less and this causes the difference in temperature. Suppose we need to locate a place on earth. To do this, we take help of imaginary lines called latitudes and longitudes. Lines which run parallel to equator are called latitudes. And lines which run from north to south direction from north pole to south pole are called longitudes. Through intersection of these lines, we are able to find location of any point on earth. For example, location of Delhi is 28 degree 37 minutes north and 77 degree 10 minutes east. Four latitudes are most important. First is Tropic of Cancer which is at 23 and a half degree north. Second is Tropic of Capricorn which is at 23 and a half degree south. Third is Arctic Circle which is at 66 and a half degree north and last is Antarctic Circle which is at 66 and a half degree south. Two longitudes which are most important are Prime Meridian and International Dateline. In 1884 it was decided that Zero Meridian will be the one which passes through Royal Astronomical Observatory Greenwich, London. This is called Prime Meridian and by taking this as reference we find other meridians which vary from 0 to 180 degree east and west from the prime meridian. Since earth completes its one rotation of 360 degree in 24 hours, this means that it covers 15 degree in 1 hour and 1 degree in 4 minutes. Since we had to decide dates also, we needed a longitude which when crossed led to change in date. This is called International Dateline. As you can see, it is not a straight line and it has been done so that it does not pass through any country as it would have been an administrative headache if dates kept on changing within a country. Let's talk about Standard Time and Time Zones. Every country has selected standard times according to its convenience so that life becomes easier for people. The entire world is divided into 24 standard time zones, but many countries have adopted multiple time zones for the convenience of their people. This is more common in larger countries. In Canada and US, we have 5 time zones. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.